Hey everybody, welcome to episode 9. We are going to talk about Aeronox. The different types and sizes that are out there and show you how I put them on. Okay, so as you can see, string knocks come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. Um, they have different features that uh, you need to just kind of play around with to see what you like. Uh, my all-time favorite right now and has been for a while is uh, the Boning Classic Knock. I like having this index on the end here and I'll try to get a close-up of it. Um, but the index that's here, when I'm shooting with a back quiver I like to be able to reach back and I can feel the index on the knock and I'll know that that is usually lined up with the cock feather and it helps me to string my arrow correctly on the uh, bow and uh, do it rather quickly. So if you're ever in a competition, a speed shooting competition like a uh, for milk jugs or if you're out shooting at rabbits or moving targets that you might need to reload quickly using a back quiver, uh, that's where the boning classics with the big index really shine. I have some of the older speed knocks or mercury speed knocks that uh, are the same way. They have a big index but these knocks have a bigger throat and they don't have the positive uh, snap or click onto the bowstring uh, like the bonings do and so um, I do like the index on them but I have these fall off the string uh, a little more frequently than I do the other ones um, with the mercury speed knocks it's really crucial that you have your string built for proper knock fit and that you keep on top of your serving uh, not wearing out because as it wears out it'll thin and these will want to pop off and slip and you run the um, danger of dry firing your bow because your your arrow can slip off without you knowing it so uh, I don't really recommend these for especially if you're shooting three under uh, because that arrow can sometimes pop off a little easier since you don't have a finger above your arrow to pinch the knock onto your string, if you will, so uh, keep that in mind. They do come in different sizes that you'll have to cons you'll have to take that into consideration when you're putting them on your arrow. So if you're shooting a 5 16 or a uh, 5 16 parallel or an arrow that's been tapered down to 5 16 you'll want to get that size so that the uh, inside is smaller and you won't have a lip. You don't want a lip there on your arrow, uh, especially if you're going to be hunting with it. Uh, and they do come all the way down to these little tiny quarter inch size for little kid shafts. And they do come in a variety of colors. Uh, the other option that I'm using right now quite a bit are the Bear Paw Nox. These have a smaller index. They're not. It's just more like a ridge that you can feel it. Uh, but the big thing I like about the about the bear paw knocks is they have a smaller throat. Uh, they seem to be more compatible or closer in size to those of a carbon arrow. So for some of my customers that are going to try wood out for the very first time, I will put these on their wood knocks so that they will get uh, a proper knock fit on their string. Again, color, it just depends on what look you're going for. As you can see, there is a variety of colors. Sometimes you'll have to use, go to a different knock because they'll have uh, different shades. So this is a bear paw green knock, and this is the bonings green knock. And you can see, uh, hopefully you can see, they're kind of a different shade of green. And so they will match up differently with the crown dips. Okay, here's a little better close-up of the knock. Here is the index that I was talking about on these knocks. You can see this this humped portion there. Uh, that's the portion that you can feel when you grab onto it. And when you grab onto the end of your arrow out of the back of your, your back quiver, uh, you can normally feel that, and that is lined up with your cock feather on your arrow. This is also why we measure arrows from the valley of the knock to the back of the point. Because you can see these two knocks have different ear lengths. 
different manufacturers, different styles, different sizes, so the ear lengths are always different. And so in order to get consistent arrow measurement, we measure here from the valley. The other thing you'll notice about these two is that the throat difference uh, between the two is quite noticeable for size. That's why it's really important that uh, when you're looking for knocks or if you're ordering a string, your string maker should be able to customize your string for proper knock fit. If the string fits too tightly in this knock, it will give you an erratic arrow flight because it will actually uh, have to pull past and it will rob some energy from the arrow uh, as it's uh, being shot. So um, you want to, uh, I'll do another video on knock fit, on proper knock fit, but you want it to just be enough to hold the arrow on there so that it doesn't accidentally fall off of the string when you're at full draw because you will be decreasing the angle uh, of that string when you come to full draw. Again, so these are three different makes. This is a Bear Paw, this is a Mercury Speed Knock, and this is a Boning Classic. And Boning actually offers a couple different uh, styles of knock. This is their Classic again with the uh, bigger index. This is actually my favorite. I thought this was kind of neat as I was going through my collection of knocks. I found some very old Ben Pearson uh, 5 16 knocks that used to come in a little box. Uh, these are actually a yellow color, it says, 5 16 and catalog number 675. So I'll have to do some research and figure out how old these are, but that's kind of cool. We're going to talk about how I put the knocks on. Once you go to dip and clear dip, you're going to notice that there is a little bit of buildup on the back of the uh, arrow shaft. You don't want to leave that on because when you go to put your knock on there, it'll rock and it won't. Uh, seat right. You have to get this knock seated completely onto the shaft and centered because if you're off, if it's not on there right, and you go to shoot it and it turns, it's going to be, it's going to wobble on you. So take a knife and I will scrape. That knock will fit all the way down to the bottom of the taper. Okay, this is a, a 11 degree knock taper. It'll fit all the way to the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife and from a, about the upper third, I will scrape that back down to the wood. That will get all of the finish off of there. I won't have this bulb or block there and uh, I'll get a good proper seat. Now, a lot of guys will just take it and you can just take, cut that little nipple off, but if you feel it, you'll feel that that taper's messed up. Even with removing that little bulb, it's better, but it'll still rock, and we can't have any of that if you're gonna have a good shooting arrow. Take my knife, and I'll just scrape it all the way down. Once it's scraped down like that, you'll see that the knock now fits right on there, doesn't move, and it'll seat all the way down to the bottom of the taper. That will give us a proper knock fit. Now, that's just a start. We'll put some glue on here. For glue, I use uh, Duco cement. I buy it by the case. I have it listed there on my website. This you can find uh, well, in the U.S., you can find it at pretty much any hardware store. Uh, Walmart used to carry it. Uh, I have been having problems finding it there, so I get get it from my local hardware store. Like this is uh, this isn't an archery specific glue, but it works great on plastics and wood, which is exactly what we're gluing here. What I do with this glue is I get it out of this. I get the tube. I put it in a little bottle with a metal cap. It's not so critical for knocks, but when we get to the fletching, you're going to see this little metal uh, tip and bottle really makes your glue lines look good. Makes it a lot easier to achieve that uh, nice clean look. In this tip, I just keep a little safety pin to keep the opening clear.
clear so that the glue doesn't dry up in there. Uh, glue stays pretty good in these bottles for a while. I really haven't had them dry up, but then again, I use them quite quite a bit. Um, to put your glue on. I'll take the bottle and I'll put a small bead on that upper third of the arrow shaft that I scraped. And then get my knock and I'll put it on and I'll give it at least a quarter twist. Now here's a real important part about a wood arrow shaft. We need to line the grain up properly on the, uh, on the bow. So we want the grains of the shaft to be running perpendicular to the bow shelf. So if this is my riser and the shelf of my bow, we want the arrow to sit this way so that the grain is running uh, horizontal or left to right. Because when you're shooting a traditional bow or when you're shooting any bow really with fingers and you're using a finger release, we, end, we tend to give that arrow some, uh, well it's paradox basically, when that arrow takes off out of that bow, it turns left, or it it bends left to right or horizontal. So we want to make sure that we have the stiffest side of that arrow to contradict or to combat that paradox and help the arrow straighten out. That's also why when we spine test an arrow, we spine test it with the grain vertical so that we're testing the stiffest side of the arrow. So on a knock, especially these with the index, all you're going to do is you're going to line that index up with the grain that's in the arrow shaft. Um, that way, anytime, even if, if the archer were to put it on their string cock feather in, or the index in towards the riser, it'll still be uh, oriented properly to where the strongest side of the arrow or the grain lines are running horizontal left to right as you're looking at the bow. Okay. That's all there is to putting on the knock. Now I will sight down the knock just to make sure it's on there uh, nice and straight and this one is and if we were to spin this one on the, the uh, arrow inspector you see it'll spin just perfectly. So that's how I put my knocks on. What did I do? It's recording. Okay, we're going to do the drawing for the free shirt that uh, I put up in an earlier episode. So what I've done is i put all the names of everybody in my high-tech Tupperware container here. Yeah. And my lovely assistant here is going to draw one. Yeah. One ticket. Close your eyes. Stir them around. Okay. Can you pull one out? Just one. All right. Charlie Miller. So Charlie Miller, get a hold of me, uh, send me an email, give me a call, or uh, send me an instant message, and uh, we will get you your shirt. Charlie Miller, a medium green shirt. Looking forward to hearing from you. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode on Arrow Knox. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And uh, coming up next is going to be Fletching. Thanks for watching.